of the methods commonly used by nurses to assess and identify the physical adaptations that occur between mother and fetus is Leopold's maneuvers. Leopold's maneuvers can be performed after approximately 24 weeks of pregnancy and during labor. The maneuvers refer to methods of palpating the maternal abdomen. The four maneuvers determine fetal presentation or the part of the fetus that is closest to the internal os of the cervix fetal lie, or the relationship between the maternal and fetal longitudinal axis. Fetal engagement, which is the entrance and descent of the presenting part into the pelvic superior strait and canal. Fetal attitude, which assesses the degree of flexion of the head. Difficulty may be encountered in performing these techniques on an obese patient or a woman who has excessive amniotic fluid. Leopold's maneuvers should not be performed on a patient with a history of unexplained vaginal bleeding or preterm labor. The assessment of fetal presentation and position yields invaluable information that assists the nurse in predicting what kind of delivery will occur. The most common potential atypical delivery types identified by Leopold's maneuvers are posterior position or multiple gestation. Leopold's maneuvers can also reveal the general location of the fetal heart, whether engagement has taken place, approximate size of the infant, whether size is appropriate for the length of the pregnancy. It also is a means of assessing the possible emergence of stressors that may give rise to high-risk situations for either the mother or baby during pregnancy, labor, and delivery. Let's return to our examination of Heather, who is 32 weeks of a 40-week gestation. Heather is in excellent health and has had no complications during her pregnancy. Uh, let me make you a little bit more comfortable on the table. Okay. You did say you had a chance to use the restroom? I did. Have the patient empty her bladder prior to the examination. This will increase her comfort as well as prevent the bladder from altering the accuracy of the findings. How's that? It's pretty good. Position the patient so her head is slightly elevated and her knees are flexed. This position is not only comfortable but reduces stress on the patient's lower back and promotes relaxation of the abdominal muscles. A relaxed abdomen facilitates the assessment and palpation of the uterus and its contents. Okay, I'm going to have you take your jeans down a little bit so I can examine you more thoroughly. Great, perfect. I'll put a drape on you. So. Lying in the supine position may have an adverse effect on the blood supply to the infant. Also, Heather, it's really important not to lie flat on your back when you're pregnant. Patients can experience supine hypotension during pregnancy. Thus, the nurse places a small towel under the right hip. This action displaces the weight of the uterus off the major vessels, promoting better circulation to the fetus and mother during the procedure. Keep your weight off your back a bit. Before initiating the maneuvers, attempt to warm your hands. Cold hands may be uncomfortable to the patient, causing her to contract her abdominal muscles and may even initiate contraction of the uterus. Either contracting abdominal muscles or a contracting uterus will greatly interfere with performing Leopold's maneuvers. The first maneuver determines fetal presentation by assessing what is contained in the fundus and what lies over the pelvic inlet. With the mother in a supine position, directly face the patient's head. Maintain this position through maneuvers two and three. The most common presentations are cephalic, meaning head, and breech. A breech presentation can be either frank, meaning buttocks, or footling, meaning feet. Using both hands, palpate the fundus with the tips of your fingers to determine which part of the fetus is in the fundus. Perform the maneuvers slowly, 
to discourage the uterus from contracting due to tactile stimulation. The fetal head will feel like a small, round, firm structure. It will move freely, independent of the trunk, back and forth between the hands. The breech will feel like a large, round mass, feel fairly soft and irregular, and moves with the trunk. This demonstrates the baby's position as indicated in the maneuver. Report findings of the first maneuver. Heather, do you know the sex of this baby? Baby girl. Well, I found her bottom right about here. And it's nice and firm, but it's pretty rounded and movable. And then I can feel a lot of angles right about here. And I'm guessing her feet are about here and her little arms and elbows are right about here. Are you getting a lot of kicks and movement on this side? Pretty much everywhere. Well, that's going to continue as long as she's in this position. So, she's pretty easy to feel. The second maneuver identifies fetal lie. Fetal lie is defined as the relationship of the fetal spine to the maternal spine. A longitudinal lie occurs when the fetal backbone is parallel to the maternal spine. A transverse lie occurs when the fetal backbone is at or near a right angle to the maternal spine. Often transverse lies result in the inability to deliver vaginally. To perform this maneuver, maintain the mother in the supine position. Place the palm of your hands on either side of the abdomen over the uterus. Exert gentle yet deep pressure exploring the right side of the uterus. Repeat this process with the opposite side. This will help determine where the fetal back and small anatomical parts such as the arms and legs may be found. The back of the fetus will be felt as a smooth, firm, continuous plane whereas the small parts may be felt as several irregularities with sharp angles. The examiner may feel independent fetal movements. Report findings of the second maneuver. Your daughter's back is right, right underneath my palm right here. It's nice and firm and easily felt. And again, you know, I can feel just a lot of little parts on this side. And she doesn't like that. She kicks me a lot. But uh, her back's right here. The third maneuver determines fetal engagement, which is the presenting fetal part lying above the pelvic inlet. The degree of descent determines whether the presenting part is floating or engaged. The third maneuver also reaffirms the presentation finding in the first maneuver. Placing the thumb and forefingers directly above the symphysis pubis, stabilize the fundus with the other hand. Ask the client to take a deep breath and let it go. Take a deep breath. As she exhales, apply gentle pressure downward and toward the mother's back. Note the size, contour, and consistency of the part. The head may feel rounded and hard. The breech will feel irregular and soft. If the presenting part is not low into the pelvis, it will be freely movable, thereby indicating that engagement has not taken place. The next maneuver will also reaffirm the findings of engagement. Report findings of the third maneuver. Heather, when I put some pressure on your baby's head, she floated up towards the top, which means that her head's not into the pelvis yet, which is a normal finding at 32 weeks of pregnancy. The fourth maneuver locates the cephalic prominence indicating fetal attitude or the relationship of the fetal head to the fetal chest. This fourth and final maneuver requires the nurse to change position. Turn to face the feet of the mother. Place the tips of the first three fingers of both hands on either side of the mother's lower abdomen. Then press down and slide the fingers toward the symphysis pubis or in the direction of the birth canal. In a vertex presentation, 
the fingers of one hand will meet no resistance. The other hand will be arrested by a rounded protuberance. This maneuver will provide important information regarding flexion of the head. If the examiner meets no resistance on the side of the fetal back and a rounded protuberance is noted, then the head is well flexed. Should the examiner first meet resistance on the side where the fetal back is located, then the fetus is in the extended or poorly flexed attitude. In addition to determining fetal attitude, the fourth maneuver can reaffirm the degree of engagement previously determined in the third maneuver. If the fingertips begin to converge and meet prior to the symphysis pubis, the head is not engaged, thus floating. If the fingertips begin to converge, but don't touch prior to reaching the symphysis pubis, the head is said to be dipping. Finally, if the fingers do not converge at all, the head is said to be engaged. The fourth maneuver is of particular importance as poor flexion may impede descent, resulting in a prolonged second stage of labor. Note that this maneuver is omitted with a breech presentation. Report findings of the fourth maneuver. Well, Heather, just as before, the baby is not into your pelvis yet, and so we wouldn't expect her head to be down, and which is normal for your time of pregnancy. So things look really good. I think we're going to listen to your baby now. And her backbone is right around in here, so the best place to listen for her heartbeat would be right about here, which is where we've been hearing it in the past visits. So go ahead and put some jelly on. It'll be a little cold. Leopold's maneuvers are helpful for identifying an appropriate location for auscultation of the fetal heartbeat. Fetal heart tones can be heard by listening over the fetus's upper back with a Doppler stethoscope. of the Doppler. Nice, strong, and regular. Everything looks great, and uh, we'll see you back here in a couple weeks. And uh, if you have any questions, if you have any questions? Not right no. now. Okay. To review, there are four Leopold's maneuvers. The first maneuver determines fetal presentation. The second maneuver identifies fetal lie. The third maneuver determines the degree of engagement of the presenting part. It also reaffirms the presentation finding of the first maneuver. The fourth maneuver determines fetal attitude. It may also verify the degree of engagement found in the third maneuver. Assist the client into the upright position by taking her hand and supporting her shoulder. Ask her to keep her knees flexed until she is up and then swing her legs to the side. This reduces the stress on her back and abdomen and ensures her safety. Concerns or questions in the interim, go ahead and give our office a call.